Hey comrades, this is Ray at MagFed Maker. We're going to go over the Milsig M5 XTC to the M6 Dauntless conversion that is turning your paint M5 paintball marker into an HPA airsoft gun. Here is the M5 XTC in its paintball configuration. So let's go ahead and go over the airsoft parts. You have a barrel assembly outer barrel with an inner barrel inside your hop up here's the inner barrel your hop up assembly the airsoft bolt and valve assembly an airsoft reg cap a upgraded hop up assembly I'm gonna go over that at the end of the video and then for those that want to remove this orange thing and install a nice little pro comp that will be included as well unfortunately because I am shipping these wherever I cannot do that myself and then the airsoft magwell and a I believe it's a mid cap magazine don't ask me how many rounds that is because I don't airsoft all right let's jump into it first we're going to disassemble the M5 Let's just go ahead and get this HCS butt plate out of the way. Oh, the tools needed will be an M3 Allen wrench and an M or I'm sorry, M5 Allen wrench, that's a 3 mm, and then an M4 which is a 2.5 mm. And then a fine-tipped Phillips head screwdriver and an adjustable wrench. All right, so let's go ahead and remove our heat core. Well, let's just go and pull it out of the body first. Take out your body machine screws. These may have lock nuts on them, so be mindful. And then next, your, well, we don't even need to do that. <clears throat> okay. And just so we can get this out of the way and it's nice and quick. In order to install the barrel, the airsoft barrel block from the paintball barrel block, it's two M4 machine screws, which you're going to use your 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. There is a little bit of Loctite on those. So they will be a little hard to bust. Go ahead and remove your um, Milsig mag depressor piece. Punch out your paintball barrel and barrel block. Mine the detents. And then go ahead and install your airsoft paint barrel and barrel block. Line up the holes. Check. Reinstall your M4 machine screws. Guten tight. And boom, you just converted your upper from paintball to airsoft. That was easy. Now for the fun part. Go ahead and remove your paintball magwell. Now remember there is a long machine screw on the left. Call it long on the left, runt on the right. Because this one is a shorter. Okay, you don't even have to take off your grip frame. All you have to do is Take out your heat core pins and washers. I'm sure many of you are familiar with dissing and assing your milsig, but I just want to be complete and thorough. Heat core pins and pull out your heat core. Push your bolt forward, move it into fire, 
pull out your spring. Set that to the side. And there is your paintball bolts. You can go ahead and set that to the side. Give that spring a good stretch, just out of practice. And now we're going to go ahead and install your new valve bolt and red cap. You will have to remove the HCS base. It's not terribly difficult. Uh, I recommend uninstalling or unscrewing this just a little bit to give you some wiggle room. That's where you get your fine tip Phillips head and undo these screws. You don't have to go too far. They will pop out like so. I just realized that only applies if you're not going to remove the screws all the way, which I did. So you can go ahead and keep that tightened. Disregard me untightening them. Okay, remove this screw. Really only about six or seven millimeters need to un actually unscrew. The rest you can pull out. Okay, set this off to the side. Don't drop your spring. And now you can remove the red cap retaining pin, spring, part, whatever the hell this thing is called. Remove that. Remove your HCS base, and now you can get at the reg. I mean, some of you extra, actually no, you will have to remove that to get the red cap off. Okay, so you may need some adjustable pliers. But take off your red cap. Be mindful of the stack. Don't let that fall off. Install your airsoft red cap. Um, also look in there to make sure there's no gunk while you're in there. Reverse thread and then hand thread on. Adjustable pliers. Guten tight. And now, same thing applies on your valve body right here. Adjustable pliers, undo. There's going to be a little bit of um, Loctite on these threads, so don't let that gunk get in there either. Blow it out if you see it. Set your paintball valve off to the side. And then here's your airsoft valve. It looks very similar, except obviously a smaller bolt face and then there's this little fire but this is gonna restrict your airflow to have a more manageable rate of fire because the Dauntless the M6 Dauntless already it, it rips from videos that I've seen at least I haven't ran it myself okay make sure that that o-rings in good condition and lubricated the ones that I've seen in these uh, kits that I'm shipping out are reverse hand thread till you hear that click and then hand thread back on because you definitely do not want to strip those threads okay and then adjustable pliers for the final torque good and tight and uh, that's it that's that's your airsoft oh well I guess we could put our HCS parts back on uh, you don't need this anymore I mean you can put it on but um, this is already installed in a way that you can't adjust it back and forth anyway it sets the reg at a steady um, compression. Uh, but I think that will help for the HCS spring. So yeah, go ahead and put it back on. Okay. Then install that little bolt. That is another M4. So you'll need your 2.5 millimeter Allen. You don't have to really crank down on that. It's not going anywhere once you put the HCS back on. Put your HCS base. Oh, guess what? I did that backwards. HCS base, then that little reg washer. HCS base, then reg washer. then M4 machine screw. Sure, some of you already caught me. Whatever. 
spring. Notch catcher. And then install your little Phillips head screws back in. And all these do is prevent the notch catching button from, aha, you did have to have that loose, I knew it. So, there you go. So it gives you just enough wiggle room to get that over the screw face. Good and tight. Check for lubrication. Give it another, maybe a little drop on there for good measure. Insert your spring. Make sure it's on semi. Fire, whatever you want to call it. And install. Safe. your pin in your washers on cotter pins in and there is your M6 derp now you can go ahead and install it as you would the paintball marker. Make sure the frame to derp holes are lined up because there's a little bit more play than the paintball engine. All right, that looks good. And install your magwell retention machine screws. Long on the left, runt on the right. That one's good. That one's good. And then your, I like to get my M2.5 Allen key to make sure your holes are lined up and you're not stripping any threads. Good and tight. And good and tight. Reinstall your HCS butt plate. There you have it. The M6 Dauntless High Powered Air Assault BB Monster Airsoft Gun Thing. Kidding. The M6 Dauntless HPA Airsoft Rifle. Your hop up adjustment is a simple cam using an M3. I'm sorry, an M5 3mm Allen key. It only goes, uh, it goes almost 360 degrees. And all the way clockwise, no, counterclockwise, um, is all the way down. And then all the way clockwise is all the way up. All the way down, all the way up. Pretty sure. I'm sure it's in the user manual. Okay. All right, now we're going to convert the M6 Dauntless Airsoft, HPA Airsoft gun, rifle, whatever you want to call it, um, into the M5 XDC paintball marker. Um, reverse steps for those that went through the entire video of installing the Airsoft. So first thing, get rid of this HCS butt plate, just to get it out of the way. 
and uninstall your body frame machine screws these are M5s with oh, go ahead and ruin the mag well too the magazine um, lock nuts so be mindful of the lock nuts And then you can go ahead and remove your complete dirt frame. I said you can remove your complete dirt frame. Let's do the easy stuff first. Go ahead and change your airsoft barrel block to a paintball barrel block with two M4 machine screws and your M4 slash 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Remove your barrel block, install your paintball barrel block, minding the detents on the side because they do come out relatively easy. Install your M4 machine screws. Okay, I was gonna, gonna try to install the magwell, but I forgot that I did not take out the magwell to derp frame machine screws. You have a long bolt on the left and a runt on the right. Oh, derp. I totally could have installed that because that is an airsoft magwell and this is the paintball magwell. There, installed. Okay, so there's your airsoft magwell. And now we're going to convert the heat core from airsoft to paintball. So, as we learned, it actually is helpful to loosen up that piece right there. Um, where my screwdriver? There it is. Okay. Remove these Phillips head screws with a fine tipped screwdriver. Only about six or seven millimeters needs to come out and you can pop that out and now drop your spring okay then remove the heat core base I guess I should have uh, removed the reg first. Okay, take out the cotter pins, the washers, and the Push it forward, semi-auto, and there's your entire assembly. Take out the spring, give it a good stretch. Take this bolt off. Now all I have to do is swap out the reg cap for the paintball regulator cap and the valve for the paintball valve. Doesn't really matter which order, so. You will need adjustable pliers to get it off if you did it right the first time because I don't think too many people that are in airsoft are going to be watching this video. 
Uh, where is my paintball valve? While you're in there, go ahead and check for gunk. Make sure it's nice and lubricated. There is a O-ring right here. So make sure that is nice and lubricated. No gunk in the regulator. And reverse thread till it clicks, and then hand thread on. And then finish off with your adjustable wrench, pliers, whatever. Guten tight. Same thing with the red cap. Start it off with your adjustable pliers. Hand thread off. Mind the stack. And then install your paintball adjustable red cap. Reverse click. Hey. I said reverse click. And then hand thread on. Until not quite all the way. Definitely not finishing that off with adjustable wrench or pliers. Okay. And there is your paintball regulator and valve. Heat core base, I guess. And let's go ahead and reinstall the HCS. Um, yeah, it only goes on one way. This little annoying piece. Our M4 machine screw. Just snug. Install our spring and our hinge latch button. Push in our screws. Do not get these too tight because they are very fine threads and potential to strip them out. Generally, the pressure of that hinge button, hinge release button, or stock release button will hold them in place, but just don't strip them out. All right, there we go. That's good to go. We can go ahead and tighten this up. Not too tight, just snug. All right, and now we can put it all together. Let's get our paintball bolt. Where did I put it? There it is, yeah. Make sure that's lubed with about a drop or two of silicone oil. A nicely stretched spring. And then we put it into our dirt frame. And install our pins. And then our washers. And then our cotter pins. <clears throat> Semi or semi uh, safe. And then we can go ahead and install. Ah, yes, important piece that I forgot. When going from the airsoft to the paintball, you want to make sure you put this in. Otherwise, your magazines will not disengage. Um, there's a little notch on the bottom. Make sure that is to the rear of the paintball marker, because what that does is that allows the ball detent in the mag magazine to release, or release back. And then these little dips are what release the uh, square heads, the little ball detent. All right, so once that's installed, then you put your mag wheel on. I'm sure there's some of you that caught me doing that as well in the beginning. Slide in your dirt frame. Um, I generally install the mag well screws first. Remember, long on the left, Run on the right.
good and tight. Then take your 2.5 millimeter or your M4 Allen key, align your holes, hand thread it in the beginning so that you don't strip the threads. And finally, replace your HCS butt plates and extension rods. And there you have the M5 XDC paintball marker. All right, so we're gonna go over the upgraded hop-up assembly. Move that over to see all the pieces. Um, the tools required are gonna be, well, ideally a punch set, but I'm assuming most people don't have that. So we're gonna use needle nose pliers, adjustable pliers, and a three millimeter Allen key and then a fine-tipped or a very small Phillips head screwdriver. Set this off to the side for now. Included in the kit is an upgraded hopper or hop-up body, a new hop-up lever, finger, um, a new cam, a new barrel clip, and a little nubbin that go ahead and start off by installing that nubbin onto the end of that finger. You'll see on the old one, it's just hard plastic, not rubber. Uh, these are supplied by Milsig. They are not standard airsoft hop-up nubbins, I guess is the technical term. Go ahead and pull up right here to remove your inner barrel from your outer barrel assembly. And then remove this clip. And you can put that away because the new body has a hole which the new clip seats into. Now there's a little finger inside that new clip. And there's a hole in the new body that the old body doesn't have. Slide out your inner barrel. Um, check your, what did you call it, the bucking? And it's this little rubber piece that goes on the back of your barrel. Um, you can keep that on there or replace it. Set your barrel off to the side. And now we're going to tear this thing apart. Uh, it's kind of annoying. So, first thing is you're going to take out this little pin right here on the top. Using, I guess we can use a screwdriver. Because this pin's actually kind of easy and it'll help you uninstall the other pins. Or... So don't lose that pin. You're going to reuse a lot of the materials from this hop up body or assembly into the old one. Take out the spring, you're going to reuse that. You can set off, see here is the old, new, and really the only difference is that rubber nubbin piece versus hard plastic. Alright, so retaining that pin and then you're going to take out your detents. If you have a little pick, it makes it a little bit easier. Save these, and then you're going to take your M, or sorry, I keep saying M, your three millimeter Allen key, and your very fine-tipped Phillips head screwdriver, and remove the cam. Be mindful because it is a metal screw threading into plastic. But then again, this cam you're not going to use anyway. So, but when you're installing the new cam. Discard the old cam, retain the screw, and now the fun part. I use this little pin because I don't have a punch set. I assume most people don't. So here's what you can do, is you just set this pin into that little hole right there, hold it in place, get your adjustable pliers to punch that little pin out. Pull that pin. Use your needle nose pliers to remove this spring pin. Retain said spring pin and then shake out this. I'm not sure what this is, but it's necessary. You're going to save that and you're going to save that spring. 
There's your old hop-up assembly. You can go ahead and discard of that. And here is your new. And we're just going to go in reverse. Alright, this is like a really annoying piece. Get that spring in there. Uh, and then you kind of got to feed the spring in first without it falling out. So that the spring enters this little chamber right here. And then slide it in. And then take this top pin, feed it just inside the body, and this is kind of like picking a lock. And you can use your 3mm Allen to just kind of play with it until you can get those holes lined up and get that pin punched through. The spring should stay in place, that's fortunate. Yeah, it is really annoying. Okay, so yeah, that was a little too much fun to get it to... <laughs> you just got to play with it enough to get in there. So I just cut to me having the pin in. So that pin is going to hold it into place. Until you get your spring pin installed. Now, be very mindful when installing the spring pin because it is very small and very easy to lose. Kind of hold it in your adjustable pliers and press it in there. Like so. Now you can take this pin out. Maybe finish it off with the needle nose to make sure it's nice and flush. Good to go. Alright, that piece is installed. And now we're going to go ahead and install the new hop-up arm. Put your spring on this other. Oh, there's a nice little change on the old body. Uh, it was just a flat spot that you kind of had to balance the spring on when installing. But now there's a nice little nubbin for the spring to fit on. Install your arm into that nubbin as well. And then install your pin. Left to right. That requires a little bit of play as well. Do not lose that pin. And presto, pin is in. And then install your cam. I guess you probably should have installed the cam first, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's see if I was right earlier. Okay, clockwise is you're pushing the hop up all the way down. Counterclockwise is hop up all the way up, or no hop up. Hop up. No hop up. Cam came out. Okay. So yeah, should have installed the cam first. Oh well. Okay, get your very tiny Phillips head screw. It would probably help to have a magnetized screwdriver. Kind of play with it until it gets into that hole. Be very gentle with this screw so that you do not strip the threads you know as a, yeah definitely should have installed the cam before the hop-up arm because the hop-up arm is putting pressure on the cam once you get the that little arm in there with the spring and then annoying little spring pin installed then you're going to install the cam. Make sure you install the cam before you install the hop-up arm because the hop-up arm will put pressure on the cam and not let you get that in the hole just right. Okay, a magnetized screwdriver would help immensely here. I don't have one. But play with it until you get that in the hole. Be very gentle when installing this screw because you are threading into plastic. 
and it would be easy to strip said plastic. <clears throat> Get your M, damn it, your three millimeter Allen key. I don't think that should have happened. All right, shouldn't be any play from side to side with the cam. And now you can go ahead and install your hop-up arm. Uh, there's a nice little nubbin for the spring to latch onto. The old body did not have that. A nice little nubbin on the arm to catch the spring as well. Make sure that your rubber nubbin is on your bolt face or your arm face. And then take your pin from left to right line it up, play with it, and push it in all the way. Okay, so here's your almost completed hop-up assembly. Make sure you reinstall your detents, one on each side. And now reinstall your barrel. Make sure you can kind of feel where the hole is on the top of the barrel, even through the bucking. Install it like so. Make sure that the hole is at the top of the hop-up unit. And then the flat spots on the barrel are going to be at your 3 and 9 o'clock. And then reinstall your clip. It only is going to go on one way. And this new clip is a lot tougher. So I noticed that I had to kind of pop it on with that. And then reinstalling it into your outer barrel is also a little bit tougher than the old assembly but it can be done with a little help. And there you go. New hop up installed. Thanks for watching guys.